Liberians use this to engage, they get in the, sorry, they engage into this in order to bring and honor women for all of their contributions made all over the world. So I'd like to invite each of you to join me in unison when I say, women oh! Will you please join me in unison and say, women? Women oh! Women oh! My name is Gary Hammond, and I'm a data scientist and STEM education philanthropist for developing communities worldwide. I started YJ STEM in 2015 to promote STEM education in Liberia, West Africa. STEM, again, is science, technology, engineering, and math. The idea was to alleviate the burden for communities with low unemployment and low quality education. We train teachers and we teach students basic to advanced STEM concepts using pre-designed STEM curriculum. Each year, we send a number of students to an international robotics competition to compete against their peers from different countries like Malaysia, China, India, the US, and Canada. We encourage our students and teachers to see themselves more as an investment than a charity because they also put in the work. We have been able to instill confidence and expand career choices for over 50 Liberian students by using their existing teachers. Waje, that's a Basa word, and it means for the sake of the people. It has taken a global community to meet our milestones. I'd like to thank YJ STEM Board of Advisors and the Liberian Senate. A special thanks to Senator Yumbly Conga Lawrence for believing in YJ and accepting our proposal to serve her district and expand to middle schools across Liberia. Later during this talk, you'll see that I'll compare the United States with Liberia. Liberia has a very unique history with the United States. Three to four percent of Liberians are made up of Americo Liberians. These were blacks that went back to, the, to Liberia from the USA. And they came by way of the American Colonization Society back in the 1920s. That connection between Liberia and the United States still exists. And that's why our Liberian flag looks just like the United States flag, but with one lone star. I believed that the difference between performance and STEM was greater between socioeconomic groups than gender. So one can imagine the validation that I felt when UNESCO reported that education and inequality was more correlated with economic status than gender. I graded failing math and spelling quizzes for both boys and girls. They couldn't keep up with their schoolwork because they had to sell in a local market, take care of a younger sibling, take care of a sick parent, cook, clean. Typically, STEM degree holders straight from undergrad make eighty dollars to $100,000 with a professional connection in their industry of choice. 65% of Liberia's 4.5 million people live in poverty. 1.3 million live in severe poverty, making a dollar and 90 US dollars per day. We could use the earning potential. The, uh, the US Bureau of Labor Statistics projects that STEM jobs will grow by more than 16% in year 2022. Skilled workers are not keeping up with that demand. The hypothesis has been that the shortage of workers is due to girls not showing interest in STEM fields. The global solution has been to focus on girls' STEM education since they are disproportionate to men in the field. 50% of the population is made up of women. It is true that women are disproportionate to men, but this is a single perspective of why we cannot fill STEM jobs. Ode to Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie, the danger of this single story is that we neglect not only girls, but well-deserving boys from disadvantaged communities if we continue this line of thinking. These facts are true. Less girls are going to school in developing communities. 
girls in developing nations are less likely to continue school when progressing from primary school to university. And a female's ability to secure technical careers are markedly lower than a female in a developed nation. However, there is an unexpected statistic as found from the data provided by the World Economic Forum. More females are seeking STEM-related degrees in developing communities than developed communities. They are striving for financial independence, and this is true both in Liberia and the United States. It is true that the world has gender-restrictive cultural norms, from female young child brides to Bosha Posh, where little girls are requested or even forced to dress as little boys and take on man's work, or even simply have access to education or have the freedom that boys traditionally have in their countries. It's true for unlisted reasons as well that females are given a tough atmosphere to thrive in life. Yet I still dare ask the question, what about our boys? Reportedly, they are taken advantage of at a lower percentage than girls. However, overall, boys and girls of disadvantaged communities have similar barriers in STEM education. Now, in disadvantaged communities, all students are left behind due to malnutrition, severely undertrained teachers, overpopulated classrooms, lack of or outdated learning material, lack of electricity, no access to internet, unstable government, and conflict on the country level. I have 13-year-olds that are in the fourth and fifth grade due to country conflicts. And internet is a requirement for homework in the United States, yet Houston's poor have no access to internet. Statistics show that 24% have no access. As boys become men, they place their value in their professions and ability to provide. Without an outlet to accomplish this, they become malignant to society, misinformed leaders, and perpetual victims to capitalism. Let's take a look at these graphs. This is the gender gap index, which compares advantaged communities to disadvantaged communities, and in this case, it's countries. The lines in the graph represent disadvantaged countries, and the bar graphs represent advantaged countries. Please keep in mind that characteristics of poverty transcends communities and has a debilitating bite on countries' progress. So what I want for you to understand from this graph is that women are seeking STEM degrees in disadvantaged countries more than advantaged countries, yet they are getting professional jobs at a much lower rate than women in developed countries. Now, this slide, it represents global competitiveness. The closer each line comes to forming an, or outlining a complete circle, the more competitive. The graph shows Liberia weaker than United States in areas of technological readiness, higher education and training, and health and primary education. Now, this next graph is interesting. The overall STEM bachelor, de uh, bachelor degree gap between black and white uh, races are actually closing, and it's great news. And it's due to the rise in the black female STEM degree holders. Black women have pursued STEM at a higher rate than any other race, but they're the least represented in corporate environments. They end up getting non-STEM jobs for various reasons. Asians. Asians in total have more STEM degrees than any other race, but statistics show that they are not paid very well. So the hypothesis fails. It's not that girls are not showing enough interest in STEM fields. Simply educating women is not enough to fill our growing STEM job listings. One reason we are not filling our STEM jobs is because we're not educating enough um, and we're not funding enough underrepresented, disadvantaged communities, which include people from all races. 
22% of blacks, 20% of Hispanics, 13% of Native Americans and others are all underneath the poverty line. On average, advantaged communities are well-funded. This may attribute to why they perform 30% better in STEM courses than disadvantaged ones. Most disadvantaged groups do not even have a STEM or science course. Most disadvantaged students are at level one, which is, which is just plain familiar, familiarization. And the baseline is two. From funding research, two out of three of the grants are for girls in STEM. The distribution of funding is narrow, yet distribution by race differences are much wider. With a huge deficit to non-white students, here is a pie chart created by Mark Kantrowitz. He's the publisher for FastWeb to give you an idea of funding distribution. That blue there is representing how many whites receive funding compared to all other races. I wanted to give this talk since starting YJ STEM because I've researched a lot of grant funding and most grants were restricted to girls or having a classroom that had a majority of girls. I think if we truly want a more inclusive STEM environment for girls, we should have co-ed classrooms. This is where you teach students to respect one another. Now since going to Liberia and helping a lot of students some students have had the opportunity to leave Liberia and educate in the United States. And I asked one of the students that came to the US, if I can do anything different when I'm going to another school, what would you suggest? His response was this, sis gewi, that's what all the kids call me in Liberia, sis gewi, honestly, every time you came to Liberia, we were so excited. But then when you left, we were just as excited. And the reason we were just as excited is because you gave us so much work. But now I look back and I thank you because there's no way that I would have been ready for courses in the United States if you did not prepare us in using Waje. And this shows a young boy who needed that assistance, who needed that mentorship before he could be prepared for school in the United States or in a more advantaged space. Now also things, other things happen in our classroom. Sometimes girls are not heard because maybe their opinion is not well understood by the boys. And there becomes to be a little bit of a classroom conflict. We fix that. We talk to our boys, we talk to our girls and we say, if you don't understand, you have to ask more clarifying questions. You don't just attack someone on the human level. Now according to PISA, that's the Program for International Student Assessment, Girls are outperforming boys in some STEM subjects by a very small margin. In other cases where boys outperform boy, girls, <laughs> the margin is also small. The barrier to access is not based on the disinterest of girls in STEM, but on educational access based off of economic standing. So this is more of a call for more grant funding for underdeveloped and depressed communities all over the world. We should not just focus on girls because there are girls that live in disadvantaged communities that could benefit from being educated right next to boys. Thank you.